It is November 1st, my dudes. Uh, it's all gone. Uh, yeah. I have a math test right now, so goodbye. Ah, oh, fuck. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Hi, I'm clean shaved, nothing new is happening. I'm gonna do a little mix bag, whatever, I don't really care. Let's talk about all the new music that's coming out, or has... Eh, just like a little mix bag, because I can't do a fucking review on everything, but I will tell you what I enjoy. So, let's start with my tie, the collab album, boom. Uh, Jeremy and Ty Dolla Sign, who would have thought? Well, these two are the smoothest voices in the game. No doubt, I think the camera's tilted, give me a second. Better. Um, so yeah, Mai Tai. Um, right off the bat, the song FYT, which is smooth track, probably the best track, easily the best track. Followed by The Light, which is a single that came out before. That song actually bumps, slaps, insanely good song. Pairing up Ty Dolla Sign and Jeremy was an amazing idea. Those two are the best at the smooth and sexy voices. Have you seen Ty Dolla Sign's eyes? I could get lost in them forever. Anyway, I'm not gonna brag about his eyes anymore. The music is great. Um, the whole album, 35 minutes, couple tracks, maybe 11, something like that. I don't really, I could check, but not that big of a deal. Um, the album, it's solid, nothing bad. I don't think there's any bad tracks inherently. Like, there's, nothing is terrible. They're mostly solid tracks. There are good tracks, and there's just average tracks, which are most of them. Like I said, FYT, which actually, is kind of a reference to a Biggie Small song with uh, R. Kelly. It's like a reference. I'm glad that song by Biggie is really good, smooth and sexy. And then you just take Ty Dolla Sign and Jeremy and French Montana, who actually just makes everything so good. I've never heard these three artists sound this good on a song. The beats they chose for some of these best songs are like awesome. They're smooth, they're wavy, they're funky, they're good. That's all I really have to say about my tie. There's another, there's another like a few songs. I mean, surrounded is pretty popular, but Chris Brown, you know, Chris Brown doesn't do bad except for you know. <laughs> but other than that, going through some things, also an all right song was a single that came out before. That's really much. That's all I have to really say about my tie, which is a pretty good project in my opinion. Then we have Made in Tokyo's album, Sincerely Your or Sincerely Tokyo, I think. Sincerely, Tokyo. And, uh, I mean, Made in Tokyo hasn't really found his niche yet. He's getting close to what style he wants. It sounds like old Made in Tokyo. You have songs like Ned Flanders, which just fucking slaps. Then you have Moki Moki, which is, it's short. I like it. I like the beat. I think it's pretty fucking awesome. I, it sounds pretty funky to me. I like when uh, Made in Tokyo tries these new things. Other than that, the project is a little bit lackluster. Not, you know... It's just made in Tokyo. There's some songs where he really just uh, does some weird stuff with his voice. I was going to do a full review on it. I decided not to because eh, it was just going to be me saying, eh, it's all right, a few good songs. As per usual with albums that are rap, that are all right, just nothing exciting out of them. Uh, other than that, there's a few good songs. The last track actually sounds like old Drake. Made in Tokyo sounds pretty, pretty similar to Drake. Not a bad thing. Really good, actually. I do like that song. Um, rest of the album kind of slides by. The first few tracks are alright. Chuck E. Cheese is pretty good. I like Retro 88 as well. That song is pretty fucking good. That reminds me of old Made in Tokyo. Other than that, I mean... Oh, What's Guanin? Which is like, what's going on? I had to actually Google to figure out what that meant. I guess I'm not good with the slang. Made in Tokyo's voice sounds really weird on that because it kind of makes me think that he's Ray Stremmerd. I mean, if you listen to it, you, you might think it's actually Ray on the track, but it's not. It's him and Roy Woods. It sounds like Swaley, is what I meant to say. Swaley's voice. He sounds like the way they pitched his voice sounds like Sway. So it freaks me out a little bit because it's not Sway and don't know if he's biting the style or not. Don't really care. It's an all right. It's, I'm sure, I'm sure people will like it. it. It's just the voice that freaks me out. That's all. Addicted to Power is just like all about just like really crude things. He just says really, really, really weird, like edgy things. It's funny. He says, talks about getting head and stuff in the shower and all that. And like, it's just filthy, vile. I like it. I think it's funny. Made in Tokyo's voice just makes it even more funnier. A few good songs. Not a lot of great songs. And then it just kind of 
breezes through. This is a pretty solid project. I don't. I think it might be a little bit better than his last, but he hasn't really done anything amazing yet. That's really all I have to say for Made in Tokyo. What I will talk about is Sunflower, which is the single Post Malone and Sway Lee, Speak of the Devil. Um, excellent song, perfect radio bump. I think it's really catchy. Post can't do anything wrong, really. When he's making pop singles, he makes a good pop single. I'm excited to watch the movie, so I guess it is good marketing. Other than that, solid. Sway, I, I'm glad they corrected. If you watch the music video, Sway makes a line like right before the chorus that they pitched really, really awfully, and it, and it just kind of like takes you back for a second. Fix it in the single version on Apple Music and Spotify. That's all good. I'm excited. Thank you very much for doing that. Post, good job. Ray, Sway, awesome job. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it for music I haven't covered. I mean, there's going to be new music coming out when this video drops, I think on Friday, probably in the morning. But other than that, we have so much music to go through. I mean, there are, there is a lot to anticipate if you are a fan of the hip-hop genre, R&B, etc. Everything that falls under that umbrella. We have a Lil Peep album coming out. He's, it's a post-mortem album, so if you're a fan of Lil Peep, I'm not really. Don't come at me. I'm not saying I hate him. I'm not saying anything about drugs or anything. Please. Same with X. A little bit of a touchy subject on the internet. I will, I will just avoid talking about it until I make a full video on it. As for now, there's an album coming out. Also, Smino album. I don't know if you know Smino. Not a lot of you do. He's kind of an underground artist from Chicago. Insane. I am extremely excited. His last album, Black Swan, came out about last year, I think in the summer. It was one of my favorite albums really well. Obviously there's not great songs, but it's an excellent starting album. I'll do a full video on that too. Black Noir is the album I highly recommend you check it out when it comes out next week, because I will be doing a review and I will do, I'll literally do a first reaction to it, because that's how excited I am. Other than that, Trippy Red, T Grizzly, kind of getting excited for the Trippy Red, because he's getting progressively better with every song he puts out. Earlier, Trippy Red wasn't really, everyone thought he was kind of like a clone of a SoundCloud rapper, but he's really found his style in music today, and that's exciting. His voice is no longer annoying to me. I like it. Uh, T Grizzly, not really a fan of the hard, you know, from the D to the A, kind of like the trap music he's doing. I do like his voice. I'm excited. I will listen to his project. We'll see if I do a review or if I'll do something like this for it. Anderson Pack, Oxnard, very excited. Anderson Pack's last project, Malibu, was excellent, and I mean that, he's doing really well, I mean, Malibu, did I say Malibu? I hope I did, yeah, last project's name was Malibu, a lot of really good tracks, if you're into anything smooth, groovy, funky, jazzy, you will love Anderson Pack. he's amazing on drums, I was gonna say on drugs, but he's amazing on drums, uh, I saw him live at Oshiega, and it was an excellent performance, he gave a really nice drum solo for us, so yeah, look forward to that. J.I.D., he is an upcoming rapper, insanely talented. He's been compared to Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole, especially old Kendrick Lamar with the way he tells stories and his voice. If you haven't heard of J.I.D., just look at his colors show on the internet or look at 151 Rum. Um, he also has a project, his debut project, The Never Story, has some good songs on it. Uh, I wasn't really a fan the first listen to, but I'm very excited for J.I.D.'s return to a, uh, the music scene. Uh, DiCaprio 2, check it out. I will do a review on that. I'm excited for it. Kanye West, Yandi, everyone's anticipating this. Kanye's being a little bit political on Twitter, but he took a break. Put it on Twitter. So I guess he's not doing politics anymore. Maybe he's not gonna get as many views. Maybe he's not gonna get as many haters. I don't really care. Don't put your politics on the internet if you want to be successful, or do, because Kanye is still living it up and doing really well, even though he's said some pretty dumb things on the internet. 21 Savage is also putting out a project. Kind of excited for that. Last project in 2017, right at the beginning of summer, I think, I believe, don't quote me on that, I'm just going by memory. Issa album, pretty solid project. We got a little bit more of a slow side of 21 Savage, a little bit more chilled out. Savage Mode was an amazing project. I really love the style he did, but I don't think he's going back to it. I think he's going to stay... But I really do like the way his voice is getting now. He's found his flow in the rap game. I just wish he went back to the more, like, hood, cynical, evil, murderous kind of. Because that was really fun with his voice, especially how deep it is. And as for that, that's pretty much all the projects coming out in November. Unless they announce more. 
Um, other than that, I think that's the rest of this video. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for staying. Thanks for listening to me talk about shit. I hope you're excited for some of the albums, and I hope I introduce you to some new artists, but we will definitely see them in the future. And I'm very excited because November is going to be a bumping month. There's going to be like no time for me to do anything other than just listen to these projects. And I'm fine with that. I love new music. And I'm, I bet you can tell because I'm making this video. So, as for that, stay safe, don't die. Uh, I think vlog content is coming soon if you're excited for that. And I think that's it. Let's just wrap it up. I'm done.